If he wants to come up, probably rather have help. All right, sorry I was late, fellas. Who we got out here? We got Mr. Smalls. We got Steve Dadowski. Excuse me, we got Mr. Martin, who just made the call. Let's see how he does his work at the table here. Looks like it's 30. Looks like he's got the two hands. Good signals. Mechanic, point to the spot out of bounds. Nice job, Steve. Mr. Smalls, nice... Uh, Chopping of the throw in at the bait in line from the trail. I'm up here by myself doing the tape and, and the camera, so bear with me. And I'll see what I can do. But all right, Chris, nice job sliding down to the center position. Don't get caught watching that ball. Rebounding, nice step down, Steve, on the rebound from trail. I like it when the official steps down toward the basket on a shot attempt. on the floor. Chris, let, let the players clear before you present it. Nice talk to the partners. Let them know it's the 30-second timeout. You allowed the players to clear. There you go. Nice job. Don't be in a hurry to, uh, to call that timeout. Let the players clear the division line, get to the bench, and then do your procedure at the table. Nice job. Nice job. Everybody looks like in the right spot. Mr. Small is down there doing a little Globetrotter stuff with the uh, with the ball behind his back. I should zoom in on that. It's pretty fancy. Look at that. Pretty fancy stuff. I'm telling y'all, Max Food came in while y'all came over here. Daggone good stuff. work here. William Good 10 second count on that. Nicely done. Had a boy Steve. I was watching your eyes at the lead on that rebound. You didn't look up at the basket with the ball. You kept your eyes on the players underneath the basket. Anytime at the lead position there's a shot up to the basket. Do not look at that rim and that ball on the rim. Look for that rebounding. Look for the contact under the basket. In that particular instance, you did a nice job, Steve. Looked like you were looking down at the contact. Got a travel signal. Game looking good. Chris, I know you're happy, and I'm not going to say why, but I know you're happy right now. That a boy, Steve. That's a good call. All right, Steve, not bad. A uh, little suggestion for improvement, just say that number one time. Come up, slow down, black, 23. Do the sign of the mechanic for the violation, two shots. I think he came up and said 23 twice. Nothing wrong with it, just getting a habit, one time's good. That just means slow down a little bit. They're moving up and down for me. I gotta tell you, I'm working the camera and the microphone, boys, so uh, I apologize if I'm late with moving some action here. I like to hear myself talk. boy, Steve, I like the way you look for that rebounder or that basket there. And you let Chris have that jump shot. I like it when that leads, looking at those bodies are in the basket rebounding. Nice job, William, with that five-second count when that ball was with you. I got you, Chris. I see you with your hand in the air for the subs. Nice job. You know I'm a big proponent of that. You wave subs in, you keep that hand in the air. Until we're ready to go, five on five, or hand it over to the new the C. Yeah, 
I said this in an earlier tape, you didn't hear it, Chris. I like how you back off and drop that ball, bounce that ball to the thrower. A lot of guys stand really close and bounce it. I like how you back up five to 10 feet and bounce it. I like that a lot. Helps you get an angle to hear the players. Good call, pretty simple game. William, you got that hand up to throw it in. There you go, nice job on the, oh, you guys look like you're ready for the state tournament in the middle of the summer. You got all the, all the moves down here. All right, Chris, good 10 second count. Everybody in position. Chris, I think that's a good call. Take a look on that play, Chris, and uh, it was, everything was good about it. Everything was good about it. I didn't know if you had an open hand or a closed fist when you blew the whistle. I don't know if you could take a look at that, but everything was good about it. The right call, right mechanic, point the other direction. Had a good switch from Steve coming down. Steve came in, took the inbound, throw in pass. Uh, excuse me, the th took the, uh, became the administrator of the throw-in. He made the switch with you, called the long switch. That's what's supposed to be done. Nicely done, everybody. Well, let's see here. Let's see how handsome Steve is. Look at that man. Woo wee. Woo, look at that man. Let's check William over here. Get a good look at William. Woo wee. The women in the audience are going crazy. Let's check Chris over here. Oh, Chris, you need a little work. All right. There he is. All right, back to the action, ladies and gentlemen. Get these women in the stands calmed down from these good-looking, handsome officials out here all right blew the whistle to to make the ball live after a timeout and then you bounced it to him i like it got a kick box ball did you uh, reset the shot clock to 15 seconds chris oh i'm sorry wrong wrong uh, wrong level it was under 15 seconds, you gotta reset to 15 in college. If it's over 15, you leave it as is, the shot clock. I have to mention that since I do the shot clock for uh, Coastal Carolina University. That was Steve, come in. Three point shot attempt, I like the way you step down two or three steps after you put your arm up in the air. That's called closing down, you'll hear that term all the time. A lot of our guys from trail like to bail out on a shot so they can start heading the other way, get a head start. I prefer what you just did. Take two or three steps toward the basket on a shot attempt. Way to help out, William. Steve hadn't made it across midcourt yet, division line, and you at the three uh, at the center helped out with that three-point shot attempt. You guys look like y'all have worked together a lot so far in this game. We're at the 10 minute mark halfway through the first half. And you guys look like a pretty good crew out here already. Chris, I, you may want to keep that five, uh, 10 second count a little lower. I don't know if you want to go straight up in the air like that. The book, the book has it coming from the sort of the waist up toward across the, the chest and out to the side. A little lower, more of a straight line going, to, more of a straight line going from the waist and out underneath the armpit. Sort of a straight line that way. Yours goes upward. I'm not saying it's wrong. The book says to bring it down a little light, lower, and um, may try that and see how you feel about coming across straight across with that 10 second count or five second count. Keeping that arm straight, a little lower, not so high. It looks like you got it around one o'clock or two o'clock. Bring it down to about three o'clock, straight across, and see how that feels. All right, I see you talking to the coach. Nothing wrong with talking to a coach. Keeping everything peaceful, I like it. 
He looked like he was satisfied with what you had to say. That away, Steve Dadowski. Way to mirror that three-point shot attempt. William had it. William had the th shot attempt. Why? Because it was in his primary area over there. There's no reason for two people to go up with the shot attempt. What that means is whoever goes up with the shot attempt on a three-point shot, they stay with the shooter. That person stays with the shooter, and then the, the other official, in that case the center, will watch for rebounding. All right, William, good, good mechanic at the table. nice little crew out here I mean I'm, I'm just trying to you guys know what you're doing and we know you guys know what you're doing if I could just say one or two things that you may just think about improving on our goal is to make you better than you uh, than you think you can be is all so right now I'm really impressed with this crew out here really impressed looks like you guys are flowing pretty good as a team Chris I know that makes you happy and me and you know why William, five second count with one hand. Switch over to the 10 second count, come up the court. Nicely done. I hope I'm following play with you here. I'm trying to do both things, but I am able to get closer to the microphone, so I should be very loud when you're watching this. Nicely done out there, William. On the timeout, just keep in mind, everybody, once let's don't start the process at the table until all the players have cleared the division line and they're sort of in the vicinity of their bench. That way it, it, allow, it allows them to get the full time allotted to them. And um, 30 seconds happens pretty quick, particularly when the first horn, I think the first horn is 15 seconds. If I'm wrong on that, you all correct me. I think it's a 30 second timeout with the first horn at 15 seconds. If that is wrong, let me know. And that's why we say let the players clear the division line, give them a chance to get to the bench, because that first horn happens pretty quick, and we want to give them you know, an appropriate time to, at the bench for comments from the coach. three-point shot attempt there. Could that have been a chance where maybe somebody was watching the ball and they shouldn't have? It could have been in that gray area too. Um, I don't know if you want to take a look at that just to see, talk about it. I like to talk about my pregame on, on a shot attempt for three-point. I prefer one person going up and I'm a little slower at it because if my partner goes up, if he's looking in my area, if it's a gray area, if I glance and see him going up, I'm not going to go up. I'm going to let him know you got the shooter because you're up in the air, and I'm going to watch off ball rebound. Both of you went up on that shot attempt. It's important to know who stays with the shooter and who looks for the rebounding. And as always, the trail going up will always stay with the shooter, and the center will keep his hand up in the air for a three-point shot attempt and look for rebounding. Or look for rebounding contact, I should say.
Get you an angle there, Steve. If it, we can try to see in between the players of so the ball handler and the uh, and the defense. And occasionally, you may want to move a little bit just to see in between the players. And watch for contact. Looks like a good save there, Chris. He was on top of it, so I'm not questioning it. You're looking right down the line. All right, nicely done. The ball was past the division line when it went out of bounds, which makes it front court. Front court throw in. You would stay right there, Chris, and William did the right thing, sliding on down to the new center position. You only do a bump and run in back court. If had been out of bounds in back court, William would have came over, throwing it in bounds, and Chris, you would have ran on down to the end line. But that was in front court when it went out of bounds. So nicely done, everybody. William, nicely done. I can't go. 2:44 left in the half, and so far this has been a, an impressive uh, crew out here working. I will say. And Joe Rosano just came up, and you know he, he thinks he's he's a part of an impressive crew, but he, he's dreaming. Well, I'm alright. I don't mind. I can talk louder into it. I was just. This has been the most impressive crew I've seen all day. I know Chris is happy. Yeah, they did good earlier this morning. I had them earlier. Yeah, they're, uh, yeah these, guys, these guys look pretty good together. Well, they've been working together for a while. And we get on over there, William. Nicely done right there. That was a nice rotation on your part. Offensive rebound went on the other side. They pulled it out a little bit, and you came on over. Uh, nicely done on that rotation. Got 1.33 left. Uh, I'm just going to start paying attention about minute mark, see if anybody starts communicating the time on the clock. See who's the first one to maybe catch it. Whoever's the first one that maybe catches it, I'll, I'll be something extra in your paycheck this week. We got about 110 and a half. We talk about communication near the end. I'm not a proponent of one minute, but I can live with it. I'm closer to about the 30 second mark, making sure we got something going on. We're under a minute now. Running up and down. Let's just see who's going to acknowledge, uh, communicate to the crew about time on the clock. Down to 40 seconds. A lot of back and forth. There you go. William wins the prize. He come up the court with his one finger up in the air. There he is again. There he is again. And then Steve under the basket acknowledged him. So we got some communication. That's important. Nicely done, William. I even saw you tap your chest at the trail there because you do have the last whistle if it stays right where it is. All right. William, when that shot goes up and that horn blows, once you get a chance, blow that ball dead. I'm counting on you blowing the whistle. I give this crew a 12 out of 10 on this first half. Hey Chris, are you happier? Are you happier? Yeah. <laughs> I can tell. I can tell. Much not, that's, a, that's probably the best work I've seen yeah. as a crew. You guys look like you've been working all year together. <laughs> that's the best crew I've seen today. <laughs> Best crew I've seen out there today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. Joey, did you do that? I think crew, I got on Jake, he said, man, hey, you got to get Joey. Yeah, the crew looked good out there. That's dirty, man. How'd you guys feel out there? I thought I thought it flowed good. I thought you guys, uh, I was impressed. I, well, I've said it several times on the tape. I mean, all the little things, all the little things. Yeah. Too 
coming in about 10 seconds before he walked in the door because I smelled his cologne. <laughs> What's that? He's right there on the razor's edge. <laughs> well, that was part of the presentation, wasn't it? It was, yeah. <laughs> Twenty minutes. Get him out there. Let's go. Blow that whistle. Get him going, William. Oh no! I will after I'm done with this. I'm, I'll be done. Tell that table to switch your arrow. Switch that arrow table. That away. That's a responsibility. Okay, make sure next dead ball, William, you don't forget it. Get back in the action. That away, that away, Chris. That away, pick it up. Everybody looks like they're in position. Sell it, Stevie. He won a new official last year, didn't he, Steve? Did Steve win the new official award last year? Rookie, rookie, rookie of the year, yeah. I, I voted for him. I, I thought he deserved it. And I like and, uh, Mike and Mayan won something. Oh. Bring that ball back out here. Where's my officials here? All right. Chris, I see you right there. Uh, you listened from earlier discussion. You, you got down there, free throw lane line extended at that C. I like where you were. Thanks for listening. And I see you're still down there about the free throw lane line extended. Got a little quick with that three point shot attempt. Don't be in a big hurry to get that up there. I, I tend to wait till it's released from their hand before I get stick my hand up there just to take my time on it. All right, Steve, good 10 second count.
three-point shot attempt, you might have been a little deep because stepped down on it at the trail. And then right now, I'm just looking for little things to just be consistent on, but I, I have no fire reasoning for it. Not a lot of action going on. You can step down a little bit, see where you're standing there near the division line. You make it get down a little closer to the action. The players were pretty far from you. Step on down. Step down, get angles. Take a look at that travel signal when you when you get a chance, Steve, or back it up and take a look and see if you like that. See what you could have done better to be a little more crisper and by the book. Uh, just take a look at it and see what you could have done, or ask me. We'll talk about it. Gonna chop that tie. There you go. You chop the time on the shot at him. I would have dunked it. This is the best three so far I've seen. Three and three, 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 three come out here together at one. They're working really good as a team right here. They're all on the same page. They're, they're moving, they're rotating, they're catching everybody's rotation. Uh, they're, they're clicking pretty good. three-point shot attempt. Don't be so quick to watch that ball out there. Make sure there's no contact with the shooter and the defender there. You were you went up with a three-point shot attempt, but your eyes went straight to that basket and followed that ball in flight. Make sure that, that how that uh, shooter comes to the floor before you release. You may have to look at that shot through your peripheral, um, but stay with that shooter. When looking at that, it looked like as soon as the ball was released, you took your eyes right to the rim and followed the ball. And you got a shooter coming down and a defender right there with him. If he had fallen to the floor, you may not have known how he got there. Chris, take a look at that. Joe Raz is upset with you. Everything was good. Come to the table. The first thing you do is you count the basket before you go through the rest of your mechanic. You, you, went, you, you went through the whole mechanic and then you count the basket and to top it off, you actually did a little weak finger going down. You know, flush that thing with your hand or ask somebody how they do it to look a little more confident. But count the basket the first thing you do prior to going into the rest of your mechanic at the table. That's a good call, Steve. Just be, just look at your travel signal. I, if I could find anything for you to work on, I'd suggest take your travel mechanic and, and work on that a little bit. It, 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 from, from here, it doesn't, it doesn't look as strong. Uh, you know, your hands going around the circles. I don't know, I think a lot of people may, 
I think a lot of people may have closed fists when they do that. Take a look and see if yours is open, your hands are open. Just it could look a, just a hair stronger when you're doing that mechanic on the spot. And I mean, I'm, I'm not being negative what you're doing. I'm just trying to find a way to maybe look just a hair stronger when you make that call. At the 12 minute mark of the second half, um, very hard to find things wrong with this crew. I mean, I look at you as an individual out here, that's what I'm trying to do, some of your techniques, but I, you guys are feeding off each other and it, it, you're looking good, and I'm pretty part of that is because the entire crew is looking pretty good. Anyway, Chris, take charge of that table on that out of bounds. I like to blow my whistle the way those subs in too. It diverts attention from that play out of bounds. If a coach isn't angry, he hears that whistle, may look up at you. That's why I like to blow that whistle after a out of bounds or a violation like that to bring a sub in. Diverts some attention to you and away from what just took place. spot a point to where you wanted out of bounds too. Before you left your spot, you pointed out of bounds. Are you what, are you Hal? Yeah. Hal Hammonds. Oh? Uh? Hal Hammonds. Yeah. Hal. <laughs> hey, he pays more attention to the women in the stands yeah, than he does the game. <laughs> On that three-point shot attempt, Steve, you might step down a step or two on the outside just to make it look like you've got the angle between the shooter and the defender. You know, if, take a look at that, how you just stood there uh, and you were sort of straight line. It just gives the appearance if you can go over that three-point shot attempt, take a two, two or three steps to your right down the line. That way you can see the, through the players a little bit more, plus you get in position for rebounding. And I was failed to move the camera there, so I don't know what happened. Just get your hands straight up in the air, kill the clock, and then point. I'm not sure if you went straight up with it or just sort of curved it behind your ear, but all in all, the call was correct, and you gave a directional for the out-of-bounds. Those are things that are important. Right, let's see, let's see if he's going to give him a... Let's see how far away after you bounce pass it, Steve. I like it. Bounce pass, get yourself back, back about 10 feet. I like that. Give yourself some room. Get the angle. Be ready going back court in case there's a tall throw in in back court. So uh, that was good. That's, I like the way you had that throw in pass there. 8.55 in the second half on Wednesday in the high school gym. Come in hard, blow it. Good job. Yeah, someone just noted, uh, use one hand to report that foul, William. Uh, try to get in the habit of the two hands now. I know it's a new thing. Most of most of the time you have been on that one, you just did the one hand on the recording. And all that's gonna come by the time the season starts.
what did you see? Well, Chris isn't going. Chris isn't going to the But this isn't his crew. He's just falling. He's got to get over to his game. Seven minutes left. Seven twenty left in the second half. Two people, the center and the trail, that went up for the shot, the, the three-point shot attempt. I watched your all's eyes and looked like both of you followed the ball to the rim. Now take a look at that on tape and see if see if you did or not. Maybe hard to tell, but from my perspective, both of you went up for a three-point shot attempt. Both of you followed that ball to the rim, and nobody was watching the shooter come down on the floor. You got to figure that out. Trail always stays with the shooter. The trail. When both hands go up like that for the shot attempt, the trail always stays with the shooter watching how he comes back down on the floor. Just get in the habit of knowing that if two hands go up on a three-point shot attempt between the center and the trail. And what better yet is just maybe glance at your partner and see if he has his hand up and don't put yours up. It's okay to get it up there, even the ball's halfway to the rim. It's okay to stick it up about, about the end. It doesn't have to be at the moment of release. I can hear you. Take, back it up, it's 5.55 on the clock. Back up to about the 6.20 mark, just about a minute earlier. Something happened on the floor, and Jake is saying that something was missed then. Take a look at that and see what it was, and see if y'all can come up with what we could have done better. It, it's 5.40 mark on the, on the clock now, and it happened about at the 6.20 mark, just, just about 30 seconds ago. Back to film up and take a look at that if you get a chance. I didn't see it, but there was a body or two on the floor there, and Jake says something was missed. I took up for y'all. I said it was a shot was missed. Chris, look at that five second count. I, I don't know if I like it going up that high. Looks like you want to maybe call a violation with the count up that high. It sound like you said 34 white. Remember that the technique is you come out and you say the color white, 34, hit, two shots. That's. You got a foul. I don't think anybody noticed except uh, us up here. Maybe Steve. He knew he had a foul. Don't in that situation, Steve. Don't be afraid to uh, come in there and talk about it. You could always say that the jump ball happened before your foul. Get out of that way. So there's always an out. Particularly if, you, if the coach was to say something to you, talk to the other officials. Say it. The jump ball happened before your foul. You know, the ball, the hand on the ball. So there was an out there if he got on you about that. But all in all, it worked out okay. You maybe look like you're stuck in limbo there. Should I run over and say something to Chris or not? Coach is all upset about a play that happened about three minutes ago. Yeah, three or four minutes ago it happened. I, I, 
think they, they kept it down here. Okay. They didn't switch it. Yeah. The one that he thought was a foul, I think they stayed down on this end. They're not switching it. Hey, it's confusing. Joe Rosano put something in his pocket. He, yeah. he keeps it out there. Joey, I think, up there. Yeah. I just have my mind. Keeping a coin in your pocket. I jump I'll carry another whistle. He switches whistles around. People like Joey keep money because they're rich. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, now he can work on the whole signal. Take a look at that mechanic at the table there, Steve. Uh, it looked like you went to the mechanic, but your hold signal, your hold signal could be a little stronger. We're, we're all talking about that up here. And, and I'm not sure if they like the way that the hand is, it, the way you got the hand on your arm as a hold. The book has it a different way, and you can ask me the mechanic for that. But it looks like you got, just take a look at that and see if you agree with that hold signal, if it can't be a little better. Ask your partners how they do it. We got a minute 16 left. I'm gonna see who's gonna win at this time on who lets who communicates last second shot and all here. So if you pay attention to the clock or not. We're down to a minute. Alright, mirror it. Alright, let's we'll see who's the first one to say something about it. We're at 50 seconds. There you go, William again. Yeah, well, Steve on the basket. Signaling less than a minute. I see it. It's just all about communication in the last second. You're aware, there's awareness now. We gotta remember a signal to who's gonna have the, the whistle on the last shot. So I'm sure there's gonna be one more communication between the teammates. Chris, right now it's yours. You got the last second, the last whistle. It's gonna be Steve's coming up the other end. See if he gives a signal, lets his teammates know, lets, lets his partners know if he's got it. Now it's Chris. That away, Chris. Nice job. I zeroed in on you. Nice job, man. Best crew I've seen out here today. No more dribbling. Stop dribbling. Stop dribbling.